Greetings! Today we're going to talk about NICAD batteries which are evil and need to be removed from any vintage electrical equipment you have as soon as possible. In the old days, 70s, 80s, and further on, NICAD batteries were used to retain memory in CMOS memory chips. And the way it worked was uh, it was usually a network of diodes that when the board was powered, the CMOS chip would get the 5 volts from the power supply. However, when you turned off power to the board, the 5 volts would disappear, the circuitry would activate or gate the voltage from the NICAT battery, which was anywhere from 3 to 3.6 volts, to the power pin on the CMOS RAM. And that would make the chip retain its memory, not indefinitely, only as long as this held a charge, but then the next time you turn it on again, the 5 volts coming from the main board would be gated to the NICAT battery and essentially brute force charge it. So as long as you turned your equipment on every so often, this battery would be charged and memory would be retained. Everything would be hunky-dory. However, a lot of this equipment, this is from a KISS, Bally KISS pinball machine. Uh, once you let this thing, this battery sit, they would take the machine and store it. I mean, uh, best case they would store it, worst case they would dump it in the uh, landfill, but when this got stored, the battery would sit here and happily supply very small amount of current to the CMOS memory. But eventually that current would suck the battery dry. And when this got sucked dry, it would start emitting evil fluids and that is the battery damage which which is highly corrosive and start destroying traces on the board and even worse than that once this leaked and then you applied power to this the corrosive substance would travel along conductors it would actually travel through the cables and it may even reach a chip that isn't directly connected but it would corrode the chip. So sometimes the, the visible corrosion was very little, but it would actually hit a pin, travel inside the chip, and disconnect the substrate from the, from the pin itself, causing all sorts of weird problems. Now this is something that is guaranteed to happen. We have an example here of a machine that sat for probably 15 to 20 years the big surprise is this battery hasn't leaked. So it must have been really, really fully charged. I mean, the battery still works. We should probably go ahead and measure it and see uh, how much power it retains. But it must still be charged, because otherwise it would leak. So, can we see that? All right, taking bets. How much of a voltage is in there? So we simply measure positive to negative. This thing's still holding 4 volts. That's a lot. So it's perfectly usable. I mean, the memory is retained. I had this board in the machine, and it saved the high scores and everything. Nonetheless, it's got to go. And what we're going to replace it with is a CR2032 button cell. They don't leak because there isn't anything in there to leak. So what we're going to do is replace this with a button cell. And what we're going to do today applies to other, to other things 
to other electronics too that have NICADs in them. Except you need to read, you need to find out which chip, which RAM chip is being powered or kept alive by this battery and see what the minimum data retention voltage is. In this case, the minimum data retention voltage is 2 volts for a 5101 static RAM. And yeah, so let's start cutting. All right, first we'll remove the battery physically. It's got a zip tie holding the body. And then we just clip it off. Gone. It says 3.6 volts, but uh, it's some sort of super battery because you saw it read 4 volts. But we got to clean up this area. There is no sign of leakage on this board. You can see the traces here are totally clean and so is the back. So we're going to take soldering iron remove all of the solder here and clean up these terminals first. Use the solder sucker like this guy to clean out the solder and then clean the holes with alcohol. My uh, leaded solder recovery uh, container that I introduced in the last video was used and we can see we have a good amount of solder here. I mean you can reuse the solder, the problem is that all the fl flux is gone. I'm just jesting, of course, but uh, hey, you never know when you might need some, um, uh, some leaded solder. But anyway, this is clean, and now what we need to do is create a cradle for the battery. What we're going to need for that is a coin cell holder like this we are going to need a diode it's a 1N4001 going to need some heat shrink tubing and we are going to need a high quality battery such as this one and that's all we need so uh, let's put together, let's prepare the coin cell holder first thing we want to do is attach the diode to the coin cell holder. We first identify the positive terminal, which is on top here, has a plus on it. So this fat part is the positive side. We clamp it. And what we want to do is solder the diode, the anode of the diode, the, the uh, unbanded side to the positive terminal over here as close to the body of the holder as possible. Now we have the diodes, the uh, anode of the diode soldered to the uh, positive side of the battery holder and the question is what do we need the diode for? Well what we're replacing is an ICAD, and ICADs are rechargeable batteries. And the way things are set up, as I explained before, is when the board's on, it gates 5 volts to the positive terminal of the battery, and thus charges it. In this case, we don't want to try to charge one of these guys, because they will most likely blow up. So what we need to do is basically block the board from uh, being able to charge this thing and that's how the diode works. This thing has about let's call it 3 volts. If the board's off there's 3 volts here there's no volts here. This is connected to the power pin on the uh, whatever static RAM we're making non-volatile. So when the board's off 
higher voltage here, lower voltage there, current happily flows and powers the SRAM. When the board's turned on, it gates 5 volts to the power pin on the static RAM, which is connected to here. So now we have 3 volts over here, but 5 volts over here. If the voltage on the uh, cathode is greater than the voltage on the anode, no current is allowed to flow, and thus this battery won't blow up. It doesn't get recharged either, but uh, with the small amounts of current required to keep the RAM going, these things will last for a very long time, and it will be really easy to replace them. Next we identify ground and the connection power connection to the SRAM and again it's the same for the ballet boards but if you're doing something else uh, some other type of board then uh, you need to make sure you identify those so the ground pin goes into the ground hole and we then bend this part to fit into the power side and then solder the whole thing into place And before I forget, we need to enclose the exposed area, including the diode, with heat shrink tubing so it doesn't short against anything. I mean, yeah, we could risk it and just kind of bend it up or stuff, but that's, that's bad form. So uh, let's measure the distance from here to there, cut this piece, and then solder this whole assembly into place. Once everything is placed and taped from the top, so it doesn't move, we will solder this side first. But before soldering the other side, I'm going to turn it around and make sure that things didn't move. So there you have it. There you have nothing. There it is. So let's solder this end too. Good thing I didn't solder it. I forgot to shrink this. So let's shrink it, solder the other end, and continue on our merry way. Clip off any leads extending underneath the board the uh, perfectly obscure diode here and now all that remains is for us to insert a battery and see if that voltage reaches this chip so let's get the meter on there so first we're going to measure the voltage at the battery because there's going to be some drop through the diode, even though that drop's going to be very little because so little current is going to flow. Boom, we just changed the battery. So let's see, where do we have a convenient ground test point? That's kind of up on the board here because this is all solder mask. So the battery itself is showing 3 volts. Oh no, it's the battery itself is showing 3.277 volts. And we're dropping 200 and some millivolts, but we're still getting 3 volts out of here. And of course the final destination is the uh, RAM itself, which is this pin. And as we can see, that pin's getting 3 volts. Remember the retention voltage is 2 volts for this chip, so 3 volts is more than plenty enough to keep it going. Here's the CPU board installed back where it belongs. Let's see if the machine still starts up. I guess I'm gonna 
spend the rest of the night playing a few games and see if it remembers my high scores. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell, share, and comment. And we'll see you next time.